In this video, we are breaking down the forecast for the entire month of March. Things are starting off quietly for a lot of us, but that will change as we head into the weekend. Snow, flooding, and severe weather is possible as we go forward, but to what extent? And how will you be affected? Let's get right into it. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. I am enjoying a very brief break here. I've been doing my taxes. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow like a normal person, but things do look a little bit more active as we go later on into the week, into next week so of course let's start diving into the weather forecast right now all right looking at the lower 48 here on the nam three kilometer model this is what the radar could look like as we go into the future starting off today around noon eastern we've got some rain showers and a bunch of snow over here in the pacific northwest into idaho we're going to talk about that in depth here in a minute we do have some showers and some rumbles of thunder in georgia and florida but that's getting out of here and we have our little clipper coming down through the upper great lakes region uh, and that's also going to skedaddle down to the south and east as well here we are around 4 a.m. on Tuesday. We got another area of snow moving into North Dakota and Minnesota. Uh, this is actually going to be pretty moderate to heavy snow as it works all the way down into Wisconsin and Michigan. It's a very thin band, though, and it's not going to last very long. So this won't result in a lot of snow, but certainly some heavy snow showers that will coat the roads in a quick manner there on uh, Tuesday into Wednesday in the northeastern portion of the United States. And we do have scattered snow showers for Maine all the way down into northern uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And look at this. If you're north of this line, pretty much over the next week or so, things are going to be quieter than what they have been. Uh, but you're still going to see snow showers intermittently. You're not going to see constant rounds of snow, just flurries here and there pretty much. And then if you're north and west of this line, we're talking about an atmospheric river, which we're getting ready to talk about. But everybody else is having fun in the sun. OK, things are warming up. It's going to be very pleasant for us down here under the red tent uh, as we go forward. But once again, not very pleasant up here in the Pacific Northwest. Let's talk about that now. All right, once again, here we are, 12 p.m. Eastern over here in uh, portions of Washington and Oregon. We have heavy snow in the higher elevations and heavy rain pretty much everywhere else. We do have flooding concerns out here, some uh, mudslide potential, as we're going to see a lot of snow melt in conjunction with the heavy rain rates. And let's push this forward all the way out into 7 p.m. tonight. We're still going to see heavy rain right around the border region of Washington and Oregon, uh, but it's a little bit less intense than what you're seeing right now if you're watching this when the video comes out uh, so it does look like most of the heavy rain happened this morning and will continue to happen into the early afternoon periods but we are going to slow down quite a bit as we head into the day tomorrow but still uh, intermittent heavy rain showers will be moving their way through uh, Washington and Oregon adding problems uh, as we go forward and of course uh, this is also going to make it into Idaho as well it's just a constant inundation of rain and moisture up here this is what we call an atmospheric rain River. What causes the atmospheric river? Well, it's our ridge, okay? You can see the big curved area here. Everybody under that is uh, having fun in the sun. We're seeing warm air advection. But on the northern side, all of that energy has to go somewhere. So it kind of rides over top of the ridge, and that is going to uh, continue to cause problems up here in the Pacific Northwest. It looks like the precipitation is going to get lighter as we go forward, but it's not really going to be over with until maybe Friday into Saturday. And even then, we're still dealing with some intermittent and light rain and snow showers through this time we're going to see an additional four inches of rain for a lot of people and a total of up to eight inches of rain for some places once again around seattle olympia all the way down to portland and salem it is very possible uh, that we have big time flooding problems out of this uh, also over here in northern portions of idaho and northwestern montana look out for those rainfall rates uh, exceeding two or three inches by the end of this storm and of course those snowfall totals are completely insane the higher up you go the more you're going to get some of those mountaintops will get more than three feet of snow from this atmospheric river. All right, once again, the rest of us, for the most part, are going to be having a pretty pleasant week. Everybody under that ridge is going to have, you know, above normal temperatures. This includes the southwest, this includes the central U.S., and of course, the southeastern portions of the U.S., where we are going to have highs in the 60s and 70s and 80s for a lot of us tomorrow. And if I pull this forward, look at that, Thursday, some of those warm temps will make it all the way up into portions of Iowa, northern Illinois. Illinois. Uh, we're still very cold though and along this line where our boundary sets up. Remember, we talked about that boundary a while ago and how that's going to separate these temperatures. But the rest of us are getting a nice taste of spring this week. Once again, guys, I know a lot of you that watch are in this area. Uh, please go outside and enjoy it this week because if the weather has taught us anything over the past, I don't know, six months, 
is these little breaks never last long, okay? So enjoy the weather. It's gonna be pretty nice. Even right before the big pattern change, we're gonna see a little bit of an advection of warm temperatures up into the northeast as well. But that comes with a price because we are, uh, like I said, gonna experience a big pattern change. You can even kind of see it here on the temperature map. As we go further into the week, into next week, that ridge is gonna move to the east, um, allowing for a big trough to build over here. And that is gonna spark our next period of activity. All right, so talking about our next period of activity, what's gonna cause it? What's the big picture look like? Here we're looking at the 500 millibar height anomalies, or as some of you like to call it, uh, the red blobs and the blue blobs. This is the pattern we're in now, ridge in the west, pretty gradual flow for the rest of us, the cold air locked up in the northeast, and we do have that moisture riding over the top of that ridge, allowing for some clipper systems to move down in between our boundary layer there. If I push this forward, our ridge intensifies and moves east a little bit, that boundary layer does get a little bit more intense here, so we might see a couple areas of stronger pulses of energy come down, bringing you know, some slightly uh, bigger snow events uh, for the Great Lakes region. But for the most part, we're watching this ridge as it goes off to the east. Everybody underneath it, remember, is going to be having very, very nice weather. And it looks like it's going to come over to the east coast and kind of give us a break over here, even all the way up into the northeast. But look... A big trough is digging into the West Coast again. And now we're back into a situation where we have consistent troughing. And just look at this. It's like a pinwheel, man. I'm going to roll that back and forth. This trough is going to throw storm after storm at us uh, from Southwest to Northeast as we go uh, into the middle of March. Okay. Once again, starting around uh, Thursday into Friday or Friday into Saturday, uh, we are going to start to see these low pressure centers form and then cut through the central portion of the country, uh, causing snow on the back side and potential severe weather on the southeastern side and then of course in the middle a mixture of everything and possibly some flooding and this is a consistent feature man all the way out into March 9th we're still in a very similar pattern uh, where I think we're going to just see a constant uh, back to back to back parade of storms come through that will just be really tough on us as far as the total rainfall and severe weather threats go as we all know March is no stranger to severe weather and I think that this March has the potential to be pretty nuts in terms of the activity. Let's look at the surface map, okay? Don't pay too much attention to this because things will change, uh, but this gives us a good idea of what might happen. There's that stronger system that might come through on Thursday, March 3rd, over here in the Northeast. Once again, some stronger winds and some heavier snowfall rates possible in New England as this ridge tries to squish up against the trough over there. But once again, for the most part, we're all having good times, okay? Underneath the ridge, we're doing really well. <laughs> Remember, if the central area of this ridge, if the middle of it gets aligned with the Gulf of Mexico, basically all that does is it allows for moisture to fling up freely into that boundary layer and then produce, you know, precipitation. So that's what we're going to see as we go forward. Looks like around Friday into Saturday, some snow, some ice, and some rain may form up here in the northern portion of the country and then move into the Great Lakes region. And then on the southern side, we have to worry about uh, the potential for, you know, heavy rain, strong storms, and potentially for some severe weather too as we go into Sunday. And and then look, that's not it, okay? Another storm forms right behind it, snow in Iowa, and potentially very strong storms down here from the Ohio Valley all the way down towards the Gulf of Mexico. And is that it? No, another one forms right behind it. So it does look like a constant inundation of storms is possible as we transition from the ridge uh, to the big trough over here on the West Coast that is going to allow for all of this activity to happen. You can kind of see the placement of these storms on the instantaneous flash rate, look at that. Saturday, we could be talking about storms as far north is into Iowa and Illinois, but I think the big threats are going to come through a little bit further south as we head later into the weekend into early next week uh, with some bigger storms popping up down through the Ohio Valley into the uh, Louisiana and Arkansas region once again. And this is going to be uh, a, a thing that is a prolonged problem, multi-day severe weather threats, and of course a terrible flash flooding threat. So as we get into the weekend, into early next week, we have got to make sure we all have radar apps. We are all ready for severe weather season because, buddy, it's here. And speaking of radar apps, we do need to shout out our sponsor for today's video, Radar Omega, a powerful app for more than just radar. With high def, customizable radar imagery, live weather cameras, storm chaser feeds inside the app, and super fast alerts and updates from the National Weather Service, you can't beat it. And now, this is super cool, if you're an alpha subscriber, you have access to the fastest and smoothest weather model graphics in the game. Just like the ones we look at on this show, you can now look at the high resolution model data on your freaking radar 
VR app. You can even view the information in 3D, which just adds another layer of customization you literally can't get anywhere else. You are gonna need this as we approach severe weather season, okay? It's a vital tool. So please go down into the links in the description, purchase Radar Omega today for iOS or Android. So let's get back into the video. All right, so let's look at that extended March outlook because when there's not a lot to talk about in the short term, we like to talk about the long term. Here's the GFS model and the total precipitation expected all the way through, I don't know, Wednesday, Thursday, getting close to Friday here. Look at this. All the way from now into Friday, the vast majority of us in the white here uh, are going to see no rain more than likely. Absolutely no rain. So not only do you have the nice temperatures, but you have no rain. So once again, very good weather for us. Very wet in the northwest and just annoyingly wet in the, in the northeast. <laughs> and we got those clippers coming down. So, you know, it's not like anything crazy is going on for anybody else. But let's push it forward. Here we are all the way out on March 7th. You can see our first storm system comes through. There's another one. There's another one. There's another Another one and of course it's uh, once again a constant inundation uh, or a parade of storms that'll be going through all the way through March 16th. This is a general idea of the amount of precipitation we can expect over the next uh, several days into the middle of March. Of course, this will change a little bit, but you can see the hardest hit area is gonna be the eastern side of the US. And this is all thanks to, once again, our big trough, our constant troughing system that develops in the West. But you know, that can't last forever. Eventually things do change and look at this. As we get into March 13th, around there, we're gonna see another little uh, zonal flow type deal where we might have some quieter weather for some of us but uh, still there's a lot of energy out there but definitely looks a little bit quieter and then as we go deeper into March so here we are uh, you know all the way back at the end of the, the GFS run around March 16th uh, we are looking at another potential time for a troughing system to work its way into the East Coast and another big ridge to form in the West so we're gonna be you know going back and forth between these patterns it looks like as we go through March I just I have to say it again guys winter is not over if you're on the East Coast I don't care if you're in the Southeast I don't care if you're in the Northeast I don't care if you're over here uh, in Illinois or somewhere right in the East Central portion of the US winter is not over I think we're gonna have one more transition period where we get a big trough that comes down and we have one more snowstorm that uh, kind of blankets everybody with a decent amount of snow uh, and it could happen uh, somewhere right here around March 16th and then if we look at the CFS model which will take us way out into the future we are going to be colder than average it looks like for the most part all the way out until April 6th okay so we have little intermittent time periods towards the end of March where we might see a little bit of a ridge come up here or some warmer temperatures in the central portion of the US but it does look like after this first ridge moves through the vast majority of us are going to be below average and once again in combination with a troughing system over here on the East Coast that could lead to one more big snowstorm now don't get too excited remember the further out into the future we go the more wishy-washy this becomes I always try to be completely transparent with you guys and you know us weather people we can't hardly tell you what's going to happen tomorrow uh, let alone a month from now Okay, uh, so, you know, we have some pretty good algorithms. We have some pretty good models that can give us an idea as to what might happen. Uh, but this could certainly change as we go forward. So once again, in the short range, no big deal. Okay, we got nothing to worry about. But as we get later and later into March, things look to get a little bit more active, not only with the uh, severe weather, but also potentially with snow. So please get that Radar app, Radar Omega. Uh, that's pretty much all I got to say for this. Hey, huge shout out to our members over here. Thank you so much. Guys, we're looking for more team members. Members. We need moderators, we need researchers, we need uh, weather analysts. So if you're interested in that, please send an email to community at ryanhallyall.com. Just be like, hey, I'm interested in doing this. These are my qualifications. And we may or may not get back to you. It just depends on how many people apply and how quickly we're able to fill these positions. Okay, so please, please, if you want to help, come help. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.